What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Today we're going to talk turkey. Hope you guys had a good holiday, good Christmas, time with your family. Santa Claus brought me a turkey fryer. Never had one of these before. I had never fried a turkey before. But we're going to go through the turkey fryer today. I cooked my very first one on Christmas Eve. Made a few mistakes. So if you've never fried a turkey before, maybe you can learn a little bit and not make the same mistakes I did. If you're an old timer and have some turkey frying tips, well, I am all ears. Feel free to send those in. You might get a good laugh at some of the things I did wrong. Turned out okay in the end though. Now I almost did not receive this turkey fryer. My wife bought it a couple of weeks ago. It was in the car in the hustle and bustle around the holidays. She forgot to bring it in, forgot to wrap it. Sitting here minding my own business the other day and she came in and said, Scott, will you run up to the car and get something for me? And naturally I replied, what's wrong with you? Ain't you got legs? <laughs> Only I didn't say that because I'm nice and I value my life. So I went out to the car to grab something for her and opened the back door and I saw this thing in there and immediately I was very happy that I was getting a turkey fryer for Christmas. On the other hand, I also knew I was screwed because if there's one thing that ticks my wife off, it's ruining a surprise. So the best strategy for me and what I'm very good at is just shutting up. I decided not to say anything about it. Came back in the house and about a half an hour later, the light bulb went off. My wife came in and asked me, did you see anything in the back of that car? And I replied, well, I certainly didn't see a turkey fryer, if that's what you're getting at. And ah, she was on me. She got really mad. And I said, you're the one that asked me to go to the car. How am I supposed to know there's something in there I'm not supposed to see? And she said, you know what? You're right. It's not your fault, but I'm mad at you anyway. What? And people wonder why I drink. Now with the surprise ruin, she said she was going to return it. And I said, don't return it. And this went on. I think the words are ad infinitum. And the way I negotiated out of this and got to keep the turkey fryer was just point out that her family was coming over for Christmas dinner. I've already seen the turkey fryer. Why don't I open it up and fry a turkey for Christmas? So that's what I did. Now, I am not always the sharpest bulb in the drawer, I admit that, but I am smart enough not to cook something big and intricate, a big fancy dish for the first time when people are coming over. So I went with what I call a plan B ham strategy for my fried turkey. I told everybody we're having ham for Christmas dinner. I also said, well, I'm getting a turkey fryer. We're going to try it out for the first time and try some fried turkey as well. So the base level of the Christmas dinner was ham and I kind of positioned the turkey as a side bonus, lest anything go wrong. Now let's talk about the turkey fryer. It comes with a burner assembly, a stand and a propane burner, which hooks up to your standard RV barbecue grill type propane tank. And on this stand, you set a big pot. with your oil and it's got a lid and a thermometer and you turn on the propane burner. It's a 54,000 BTU propane burner, darn near like a jet engine. And side note here is I think I'm going to try a walk on this thing and maybe try to season some carbon steel on it because it was quite a powerful propane burner. And then you take this kind of skewer hook thing and stick it up through the cavity of the turkey. Sorry, buddy, you may feel some slight discomfort. And that hooks into here with a wing nut and washer. And there is a coat hanger type hook, which I can't find at the moment. And you simply set this down into your heated oil and fry your turkey. Sounds very simple, but I made several mistakes. So let's go through frying my first turkey and see what I did wrong, and maybe you can pick up some pointers from that. My first mistake was in choosing the wrong bird. And I almost feel like I should apologize to this bird just a little bit. Now this fryer can hold an 18 pound turkey, but the turkeys you see here, they have wings, they have legs. 
When it comes to chicken, I like a leg, I like a thigh, I like the dark meat. When it comes to turkey, I am not a leg man, but I do enjoy a nice breast. So I got a full turkey breast, but one that didn't have the wings, it didn't have the legs on it. And I think that was a little bit of a mistake. I'll show you why here in just a minute. The second thing I did was I found a recipe for kind of a Cajun Creole seasoning rub and marinade on the internet. It was actually very flavorful, but the recipe was for a big turkey. Again, one with legs and wings and everything. More of an 18 or so pound turkey. My legless, wingless turkey was less than 10 pounds. So I ended up using pretty much twice as much rub and marinade as I needed. That turned out to be another mistake. Now, if you read the instructions for a turkey fryer, one thing becomes abundantly clear, and that is you're probably going to die. You know, I think if I had ordered a build your own Hellfire missile at home kit, there would be fewer warning labels on it than on a turkey fryer. Now the instructions say you're definitely not supposed to do this indoors. You're supposed to do this outdoors, at least 10 feet away from any structure. So I went out on the back deck. I had already melted part of the rail one time with the barbecue grill. So I decided that would be a good place for the turkey fryer. The instructions also say not to use the turkey fryer when it's rainy or windy. Unfortunately, Christmas Eve in Salt Lake, in the Salt Lake Valley, it was windy and rainy. Now we had nice snow a few days before, then the temperature went up to 40 degrees and it started raining. So we went from white Christmas to kind of green, muddy Christmas. And actually now it's snowing again. So we timed that perfectly. Regardless, Christmas Eve, it was rainy and windy, but I decided to forge ahead anyway. So I put down a tarp first. After all, I wouldn't want to get grease on this rotting 25 year old deck that needs to be replaced. Set up the burner assembly. Hooked up a propane tank. Now you can use your big RV propane tanks if you like. I don't like moving those around. When portability is an issue, I like using this little guy. Very handy to have one of these as well. And to light the burner, what you do is just open the valve on the propane tank, then open the second valve on the hose. And it's got a little thermocouple thing, so you have to push in this orange button to allow the gas to flow when the unit is cold. Hold a lighter above the burner, push that orange button in to let the gas start to flow and it lights up. Next, I'm gonna add my oil to the pot. I've got a big vat of peanut oil from Sam's. And previously I had estimated the amount of oil I'd need for, for my turkey. So I filled up the appropriate amount there. Stuck that thing on the burner, put the lid on, inserted the thermometer and started that to heating up. So I cranked the burner up and it ended up taking about 20, 25 minutes to get that oil up to 350 degrees. But granted, I was out kind of in the rain and on a very windy day, and it was probably 40 degrees outside. Summertime, daylight, dry conditions might be a little bit quicker. Now let's take a look at the bird and go through a few of the mistakes I made. Uh, first thing is, I feel like I should apologize to this bird, probably not the way it envisioned going out. But as I mentioned, I got only the breast. I didn't get a big turkey with the wings and the legs. Those have a cavity in which is usually a neck bone and a bag of giblets. This one did not have that. There was no cavity. So when I went to put the skewer through the cavity, there was no cavity. Uh, I thought about it for a minute. I brought in the string pig. I was going to get some string and tie it to the skewer. That didn't seem like it was going to work correctly. So what I ended up doing is just taking a chef knife and jabbing a big hole right down the middle of that turkey and putting the skewer up there. Now on the box and everything else, the turkey seemed to be standing kind of upright. Mine was more horizontal. So having read all the horror stories about turkey frying incidents, I hooked up the garden hose. I had a fire extinguisher. It was cold outside, so I had a hat and coat on anyway. I got my big red gloves I use with my Lodge Camp Dutch oven out. And pretty much the only thing left uncovered was my face. And I had a big stack of these virus guard face shield things left over. They work really well when I'm weed eating the backyard. Got one of those on and got ready to fry the turkey. Now, very important safety tip here. 
if something is going to boil over, you don't want it to hit an open flame. So they say to turn the burner off before you drop the turkey in. So I turn the flame off, use the upside down coat hanger hook thing, open the lid, and... Actually, after all the hysteria and the fear, it turned out to be pretty anticlimactic, I gotta say. Put the turkey in, nothing bad happened. It started boiling and frying. Got the lid on there, relit the burner. The instructions say that good temperatures to fry turkeys at are 325 to 350 degrees. I had the oil at 350. When I put the bird in, the oil temperature dropped. I relit the burner and brought that oil back up to between 325 and 350. Things were going well so far. Now here's where I made another mistake. The manual says to cook a turkey three and a half minutes per pound. The legs and the wings add to the weight of the turkey, obviously. But for me, since mine didn't have the legs and wings, it still had the same size turkey breast though, so I had to adjust my cooking time. So this is about a seven, eight pound bird. After about 20 minutes or so, I decided I would lift it up and check it. And holy cow, what is going on? I think I've turned this thing into a piece of charcoal. That's what I feared when I first brought it out, but that turned out to not be true. Believe it or not, this turkey is actually not done. What happened is I had so much of that Cajun Creole seasoning on the outside. It was essentially like Cajun blackened fish or Cajun blackened shrimp. I had a Cajun blackened turkey. It was all that extra seasoning and Creole rub I had on the outside, really, really darkened in. I took the turkey out, tempted it, and it was not up to temperature, believe it or not. It had to go back in for another 10 or 12 minutes or so before it was done. So that gave me time to drink one more beer in the meantime. Got that turkey out, brought it in, let it rest. Once again, I was scared that I had burned the heck out of this thing, but the problem turned out just to be the rub. But I gotta say, it was delicious. We let that thing rest 10 minutes, we sliced it up, we had five or six people standing around, and we ate half of that turkey just standing here, and everybody said it was delicious. I'm gonna work on my presentation on changing up my rub for the next time, changing on the size of the bird, the type of bird I'm gonna get. One other mistake I made is also related to that Creole seasoning. Now, turkey oil, frying oil, is very expensive these days. It was between $40 and $50 for that big box of Sam's peanut oil. Actually cost about twice as much as the turkey did. That Cajun Creole seasoning, not only did it blacken in the bird, it put a bunch of blackened seasoning into the oil. So normally, I would filter the oil and get several uses out of that. I think with all that Cajun spice in there and the fact that it really changed the color of the oil, I'm probably gonna to have to throw that oil out. I only got one use out of the oil. So that was my third big mistake. Okay, so that was my very first fried turkey. I'm gonna give myself kind of a C plus, maybe a B minus if I'm being generous. There are a couple of problems, but I think they're fixable. Now, if any of you guys are experts, if you've done this a bunch of times, please let me know what to do in the comment section below the video. Always looking for more cooking tips and tricks and strategies. Now this wasn't exactly a review, but for my first usage, I do enjoy the Loco Turkey Cooker. I kind of give it a thumbs up. Also give my wife a thumbs up for a nice Christmas present. That about wraps it up for this episode of Uncle Scott's Pancast. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.